think it's mostly because it's interesting. Um, this this person uh, had calcific tendonitis. They performed surgery and removed the calcification. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know why. Um, I mean, oh. uh, and there the I, I don't know exactly what happened, but they had to um, repair that uh -huh. tendon. And yeah. there's some funny looking. Um, signal on the infraspinatus on the T1. Uh, there's like a trotopic calcification inside the this tendon. This one here. Yeah. There, there. And it's fat saturated. Yeah. So it's fat saturated. So it's a fat, yeah, it's, it's mature bone. Um, yeah. Whether, yeah, whether it's heterotopic calcifications. Do you have any prior, like any yes. pre op? Uh, I, uh, yeah. The other one um, in the, the other case, it, it's the pre op. Ah, okay, so and just jump right back into this one. So, yeah, so they had to fix the tendon with this screw here, and now, what what's the time delay between surgery? Mm, uh, like I don't know, like six months or something. Uh, it it was not not longer than a year. I think it was like six months. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we have this defect here. I mean, basically, you already had like one of the differential would be some form of heterotopic calcification, although that's not very common in the tendons when we think about how many rotator cuff tears, etc. we get. Mm -hmm. uh, it might just be some tiny fragments from the drilling uh, because there's also quite a, a large widening of these um, yes. tunnels, so the screw is much smaller than the actual tunnel, so there might be either like a form body reaction or there may, might have been a form body reaction yeah. or they had some issues with the drilling in the first place that Maybe these are actually some of like fragments that were torn mm -hmm. off. Uh, let's try to find the tendon so we can scroll and follow the tendon slip all the way over so we can see it's kind of like sitting like a like a cup. Uh, so it would quite fit nicely on this on this area. Oh. Like the um, like the the, the angle like the vector of the screw is kind of like an, even like a little bit tangential. Is that even an English word? You know, it's got quite oh. parallel to the surface rather than you know going maybe more steeper. So uh, mm -hmm. and we can see there's kind of a lot of coverage here that's missing, maybe even mm -hmm. down to this point. So maybe there is yes. actually a little bit of that piece of bone was broken off when they started drilling from this area, maybe just fractured out a tiny bit here. And that's now here together with the tendon that's attaching on there. What we can that check makes that. sense. But that's uh, like a retracted uh, tiny fragment that should actually sit on top of this widened tunnel. I think that's probably the more likely diagnosis because the mm -hmm. heterotopic calcifications in rotated cuff tendons would be rather like like rare. I don't remember a case, but we can check heterotopic calcification just to see what the literature is saying. So that's uh, minimal evasive. So obviously there seems to be some uh, case reports about that. Uh, so we can check. Yeah, I guess I ended up in there. Yeah, 19th century. Okay, that's not helpful. So, yeah, I mean, it happens in the hip. So why shouldn't it happen also in in the shoulder, right? But I don't actually see that, uh, or haven't seen that. Uh, not that I remember actively. But yeah, so there are com some case reports: severe heterotopic calcifications. Just want to see how that looks like. Um, I don't even know what they are showing. This is. Other than not even that so that's the ligament yeah i'm not sure what they are it's probably an orthopedic journal yeah uh yeah it's sort of yeah <laughs> what i thought yeah <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i mean that's the differential like it's mature bone it's, it's, it's not tumor it's not hydroxyapatite and then it's basically just a two differential i don't have a better idea yeah but it's interesting yeah that's right excellent <laughs> 